So learning about matter today, y'all. And remember, uh, what did we decide in two weeks from today is the quiz? Yeah. Two weeks from today, we'll have a quiz over matter. All right. So today we're going to be looking at states of matter. Does anybody know what it means when I say a state of matter? What state is matter in? There's three states of matter. There's actually four, well, but we're going to be, there you go. Uh, liquid, solid, gases, right? Solid, liquid, gas is the state of matter. So let's review what is matter. Who can tell me what matter? That's a good quiz question right there. What's matter? Kayla, go. Matter is something that takes place. And has? And weight. has matter. Mass. No, mass. Mass. Okay. Somebody said weight. Remember, because we're on the planet Earth, I will accept weight. But technically, it's mass because weight has to do with where we are. Planet and Earth. How much the gravity is taking. Matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. What about this? Whoa. Balloons. What kind of balloons? Helium. helium. Blue. Blue helium balloons. They're floating, right? So um, it's floating. Does that mean it has mass? It does have mass, and the deal is, the difference is here, is the mass is lighter than the mass of air. That's why it floats. Things that float are because they're lighter than air, and helium was one of those. The other one that does that is hydrogen. Hydrogen floats in a balloon, too. It's just that we don't use hydrogen balloons because they explode. Helium balloons do not. All right, so that is matter. You can see it takes up space inside that balloon right there, okay? Which brings us to, once again, still reviewing. All matter is made up of small particles called atoms, right? We knew this, yes, atoms. And if I show you, matter is made up of one kind of atom called an element, so it, each thing. So there are about, here's my periodic chart of the elements, periodic table of the elements. Yeah, look at it. And this lists, yeah, I'll put it down on there just for a second. This lists the known elements that we have, and it goes all the way to number 118. I believe my one from college only goes up to 103, which means they had that many discovered since I left college. And when I say discovered, they make them in a laboratory. So number one through 90 something or rather, 94 maybe, are found naturally, and the rest of them have all been manufactured in a laboratory through great painstaking work. Why do they do that? Because they can, all right? They, they can make them. But they don't last very long because they put them together and they're too, they're too big and they're unstable and they fall apart. Okay, so you would recognize a bunch of the names on here. Uh, for instance, have you ever heard of hydrogen, yeah. helium, lithium? Yeah. I've heard of it. Batteries, lithium batteries, that's what's running the Tesla cars, right? Uh, beryllium, maybe not that one. Boron, carbon. Nitrogen, yeah. oxygen, yes. no, I've never heard of that before. Fluorine or fluoride, yes. yeah. I've seen like neon, fluoride, yes, you've yeah. heard of neon, yeah. sodium, sodium. Yeah. magnesium. Yeah. Those are My nutrients. Yeah, they're nutrients. We take them in a, a vitamin. Aluminum, yeah, we've definitely heard of aluminum. Silicon, that's the yeah. Yeah. after oxygen. That's the number one. We learned that in rocks, right? That silicon was the number one um, atom. Phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, argon, that's a gas in there. Uh, mm -hmm. Potassium, calcium, okay, here's one from probably you haven't. Scandium, yes. titanium, yes. Yes. vandium, chromium, manganese, iron, yes. cobalt, yes. nickel, copper, yes. zinc, yes. gallium, germanium. Not the first name, but yeah. Where do you think germanium was named after? Germanium. Germany, yeah. Arsenic? Germania. Arsenic? Heard of that one? It's poison. Yeah, kind of, it's yeah. poison. Selenium. Yeah. That's good to take as a thing. Bromine, krypton. You get the idea. Krypton. All right. Yeah, krypton's one of the ones over here to the right. Okay. So the thing that makes um, an atom, what it what it makes its identity. Oh look, here's our chart right here. It's kind of small though, but you know it's shaped in this special way, and it's it's shaped in this way for a reason. Uh, it's on purpose. The, the guys over here in the far left column going down are family number one. And in family number one, they all act similarly. Okay, so except hydrogen. Hydrogen is a special that does everything specially. <laughs> hydrogen and helium are both kind of special. Okay, and then we have all these guys down here lithium, sodium, That's potassium. That's why they're on the top. That's why they're on the top, yeah. Um, rubidium, cesium, and francium down here, they all act similarly. 
on this side, so each, this column two, they act similarly. Then we have three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, ignoring these guys in the middle. So this, um, on the screen up here, it's the pink ones in the middle. They act, uh, they're not as predictable as the ones on both sides. The ones on both sides are very predictable. The thing that identifies what it is, is how many protons it has. Protons are a little subatomic ar uh, particle that sits inside of it. All right, and, in, and the proton is found right in the middle. It took a long time for scientists to figure this out. And furthermore, we've never seen them, nor will we ever see them until we get to heaven and there's a really, 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 really strong microscope. We don't know what atoms look like. We just have a really good guess. Yes, Ollie? Okay. Yeah, we don't, we don't know. Um, but our guess is based on some good evidence of experiments that have been done. For instance, let's take a look at carbon. Carbon, it tells me right here that its atomic number, right up here in the corner, right here in the corner, its atomic number is six. Now because of that, we know something about carbon, and what we know is that it has six protons. It has six protons. So the number on each, like here's number 11 is sodium, how many protons does it have? 11, yeah. So this is, if I gave you a quiz and I said, I gave you one of these and I said, okay, what atom has 44 protons. You would look for number 44. It's one of them. And it's called ruthenium. It is. Named after Ruth, I guess. I don't know anything about ruthenium. Wait, is this, is this on the HT? Or it might be. Something like this might be. So the number of protons tells what it is. Now, with protons, for instance, with carbon, I would have, in the middle of my carbon, I'll have six little positively charged things called protons. There's six of them, right? And because there's six, that means it's carbon. Period. If I want to change it from carbon, I'm going to have to add more protons or take some protons away. That is not easy to do. That's very, very difficult to do. Can we do it? Yeah, with a lot of money and a big fancy laboratory. But naturally, it doesn't happen. Question? What are the ones on the bottom? Those are the ones that act really strangely. We pull them out because they just don't fit in with their family. They're the, the oddballs. They're the <laughs> black sheep, if you will. Yeah. So, um, but good question. All right. Yes. What are the ones on the top? They're kind of like. You're talking about here? No, no, no. Oh, this, this is telling us our family number. Family number one. The thing in the middle. Thing. Oh, this is the key. Oh. The key that tells us what the colors mean. Okay. So, for instance, it says here are the alkali metals, uh, the alkaline earth metals, uh, and if they're the orange, they're the E, Gs, et cetera. Noble gases is we don't put the end. No, but let me say don't do the chemistry. All right, so if I want to mess with an atom and, and deal with the proton, that's called nuclear, nuclear physics. Yeah. That's, that's called physics. Not easy, very expensive. People win Nobel Prizes because they're doing this crazy work with these. We can't do that. <laughs> we cannot change the nucleus in this class. We cannot change the nucleus of an atom. Okay? We don't do nuclear physics in homeschool or any school for that matter. Maybe in a college that is higher level London. graduate work somewhere in London. I don't know. London. Yeah. London. So, no, because I have six positive charges in my carbon, uh, the carbon is what's known as neutral. That means there's no charge at all. It means I have to have something that is counteracting that. And what I have is six negative charges. Those are called electrons. And they're spinning around the center, like the moon spins around the earth. At least that's the best guess we have right now. The first orbit has two negative electrons in it, and then the second orbit has four more because there's six, okay? Spinning around like that. Now, these electrons in the outer cell are known as valence electrons. Those electrons can do chemistry. All right, so chemistry is not messing with protons in the middle. Chemistry is messing with electrons in the outer shell. Okay, so this is like what we'll do is we'll take these electrons right here, and they're going to attract something positive. Hydrogen's number is one. How many protons does it have? One. one. So guess what hydrogen loves to do? It loves to bring its little, because it has one proton and one electron, and it likes to bring that proton up and bond with that little negative charge. It does have a little electron right there. Um, 
And then the electron then gets shared with the, this little electron gets shared right here. And it'll do it four times. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So I can say this is bonded here, 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 and here. So whatever goes on one of them. And this is called C, carbon in the middle, H4. CH4. Four, four hydrogens around a carbon. That's the simplest hydrocarbon. It's known as methane. It's a gas that's stinky, that, that cows belch up. They yeah. burp it up. Yes. Yes, Paul. Um, so if you change one of them, all of them would also change? It depends. I could change like one of them to an OH. You know, put an OH on there, so put an oxygen in there and come up with a hydrocarbon that way. It just depends. When we're mixing things together, and we have a reaction, a chemical reaction, we typically see a change take place. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. We're talking about phase changes, and therefore we have a change that's called physical change. And did we talk about this last time? Didn't I crunch the paper up last time? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we take the paper, I crunch it up, that's physical change, but I could also change it chemically by? Burning. No, he did Taking a fire. Burning it, right, right, very good. All right, when atoms link up, like this one I drew here, CH4, we call those molecules. In this particular one, we have an oxygen sharing electrons, once again, hydrogen. Since hydrogen just has that one electron, guess what? It likes to share that with lots and lots and lots of different um, elements on the table, yeah? So hydrogen's very useful that way, because it only has the one. And when it links up with an oxygen and two hydrogens, we have the stuff of miracles, known as water, right? And water is so important for life. If we didn't have water exactly the way it's shaped, exactly the way it behaves, we wouldn't have life as we know it on this planet. You know what I kind of want? I kind of want cotton swabs. What? You can have Swiss cotton swabs. What, what are we talking about? In England, they call cotton candy cotton swabs. Oh, okay. Cotton candy. All right. Gotcha. All right. This is a larger molecule. Each one of the gray balls is a carbon, so one, two, three, four, five, six. The red ones are oxygens, one, two, three, four, five, six. And the little white ones are hydrogens, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So this thing is called C6H12O6. Yeah, I know. Which happens to be, it's a yeah, it's not a huge molecule, but it's bigger than the H2O, right? But it happens to be something known as glucose. I heard that story. Glucose is a type of sugar that plants make. Plants make it in photosynthesis. And we need to eat it, and when we eat it, we can use it to make energy in our bodies. Kaylee. We learned it last year because we were just yeah. learning about the... About photosynthesis, oh, okay. right, Ollie. I never knew that that's what all those little numbers meant. Oh, really? The little 6 knew. and 12? Okay, it has that. to do with how many are there, like H2O. I was so that there's there are two hydrogens and one oxygen. So oh, I never knew that. that. And they say my now. grandma had the thing where it's like a fingerprint. Yeah. And if you, if you fingerprint and you put the blood on like a um, like a stick and you put it inside the thing, it says how much glucose you have in your body. She must be a diabetic. Yeah, she's yeah, a diabetic. yeah. She has to test her blood glucose level. Yeah. And, and it just, she keeps track of it. Yeah. yeah. So hopefully she's got that under control. <laughs> All right, now we're gonna be looking at physical properties first and chemical properties after that. Okay, physical properties. The characteristics of a substance can be observed without changing its identity. That's called a physical property. That's crumbling my paper up into a, a, just a, a wad of trash, right? That's a physical change. All right, one physical property of matter is its state, solid, liquid, or gas. All right, solids have a definite shape and volume. Liquids have a definite volume, but not a definite shape. They take on the shape of their container that they're in. And then gases have no definite volume and no definite shape. Gases will just spread out as much as they want to. This is the whole uh, microwave popcorn story. If somebody's making microwave popcorn in the kitchen, we'll know it pretty soon, yes? Because we'll smell it over here. Because the gas of popcorn smell will make it all the way to this room. And like I always say, if somebody burns microwave popcorn, well, we also know that. We will know it, and it'll smell bad, right? <laughs> All right, let's watch a little video on states of matter. You may not think about it a lot, but everything in the world, including you, takes up space. The food you love to eat, the drinks you grab to quench your thirst when you come in from playing outside, the desk you sit at in your room, the pets you love. 
the bed you sleep in, and even the air you breathe. All of it takes up space. Of course, it doesn't all look the same and feel the same, smell the same, or even behave the same. And some stuff that takes up space, like the air you breathe, you can't see or touch at all. We have a word to describe all the stuff in the world that takes up space. Matter. Matter is all around us, whether you can see it, feel it, touch it, smell it, or not. And that's what today's lesson's all about. States of matter. No, not states that matter. That's a geography lesson for another time. States of matter. Okay, so think about it. How many different ways can matter exist? Some matter you can hold in your hand, like a ball or a book. Some matter you can feel but you can't really hold on to, like water or soda. And some matter, like air or helium in a balloon, you can't see or feel or touch at all. So there are three different states of matter solids, liquids, and gases. And it's pretty easy to tell them apart. I mean, you can't drink a solid, right? And you can't hold on to a liquid. And a gas, they're all around you. But you wouldn't even know it because you can't see them. You might be tempted to think that gases aren't as important as solids or liquids. But without gases, none of us would even exist. Do me a solid. And think about the chair or couch you're sitting on right now. What's it like? Does it have a definite shape? Is it soft, hard, a little of both? Can you pick it up? Does it make a sound if you tap on it? What about the computer or device you're watching this video on? Or the bread you ate last time you had a sandwich? Solids are things you can pick up, hold, and feel the shape of. Solids always have a shape. They can be hard, smooth, rough, or soft. They come in all different sizes, from as small as a marble to as big as a mountain. And you can hold them in your hands if they'll fit. Now, let's talk about liquids. The most common liquid is water, but there are a lot of other liquids all around you. Ever had a bad cough and been given cough syrup? That's a liquid. So is vinegar, vegetable oil, chocolate syrup, and the cleaning fluids your parents might use to tidy up the house. The gasoline your parents put in their car or lawnmower, yep, that's a liquid. So is the sweat that comes out of your body when you run around a lot. Of course, a lot of the liquids we just mentioned are partially water, but they're still liquids. So, can you tell me what all liquids have in common? First, they will always fill the bottom of a container if you pour them in, and they'll take the shape of that container as you continue to pour. They usually have a smooth surface. They can be really hot or cold or somewhere in between, and they don't have a specific size. A liquid like water can fill an entire ocean or the smallest crack in the sidewalk. Okay, now let's talk about gases. Gases are some of the most interesting of all types of matter because they're all around you, but you can't see them. A gas is invisible, has no shape or size, can fill any size container, and has no surface and moves around easily. Oxygen is a gas that makes up part of the air around you that you breathe in. Other gases in the air are nitrogen and argon, not to mention CO2 or carbon dioxide which is a gas that you breathe out. Carbon dioxide gas gets absorbed by the trees around us. Other gases you might be familiar with are helium and propane. Helium is used to fill balloons, and since it's lighter than air, a helium-filled balloon floats upward. If you've ever seen your parents cooking barbecue on a gas grill, the gas they're using is propane. It kind of goes without saying, but certain matter is easier to go through than other matter. You can swim in a liquid more easily than in a solid. Ever tried swimming in a ball pit? And you can run through a gas-like air much more easily than you can run through a liquid or a solid. Here's where the subject of states of matter gets even more interesting. Believe it or not, 
There's some matter that comes in all three forms. Think about water, for example. Most of the time you think of water as a liquid, but when you freeze it, what happens? It becomes ice, a solid. And what happens when water boils? Ever watched your mom cook a pot of pasta and see the steam rising from the pot? That's water as gas. Here are some other examples that you're probably familiar with. I'm sure I'm not the only one who's had to rush on a hot day to quickly eat an ice cream cone or popsicle before it starts dripping down my arm. When a frozen treat melts, it's because it's transitioning from a solid to a liquid. You can actually smell things turning from a solid to a gas too. Ever smelled mothballs from across the room? Those mothballs are a solid, but the smell hitting your nose, that's the gas that the mothballs are emitting. Same is true when you smell cookies baking or a candle burning. I don't know about you, but I prefer the smell of baking cookies to the smell of mothballs. So, there you have it. Now you're one step closer to understanding the matter that makes up all the stuff in the universe.
Okay, that's changing from a solid to a liquid. If I want to change from a liquid to a solid, for ice I can do that easily by making it colder. All right, but like I said, if I have a gas and I want to make it into a liquid, I can do that, take my gas and move it into a liquid by condensing it, pushing them by force closer together, and it will turn into a liquid like that propane. If I take my liquid and let it vaporize, letting those atoms spread out, then I can turn it into a gas. This is a little harder over here, going straight from a gas to a solid or a solid to a gas. It's called sublimation and deposition. The sublimation, you've probably seen it before. Have you ever played with dry ice? Yeah. You know, it, it's a solid and it makes smoke, right? I turn straight to a gas, it doesn't have a liquid time. And it's because it's sublimating. And it just has to do with its carbon dioxide, its frozen carbon dioxide. All right, words to know. Condensation, the process of a gas becoming a liquid, it condenses. Think about the propane being squish, squish, squish close together, it'll turn into a liquid. Vaporization, evaporation, you see it in there, the same word. Are. Liquid becoming a gas, absolutely. Evaporation is the process of being vaporized. <laughs> Freezing is the process of a liquid becoming a solid, and melting is the process of a solid becoming a liquid. This might be something you'll find on a quiz, okay? So keep that in mind. These words would be important to know for your quiz in two weeks. Okay, phone down, girls, right now. Take it away. Thank you. Put it away. All the way away. All the way. Backpack. Thank you. All right, chemical change. Chemical change. Matter can undergo chemical change. This is different from physical change. Chemical change is the process of two or more elements or molecules combining to form a new substance. When I do that, I am messing around with the electrons. Remember, never with the protons. Never with the protons. I can't mess with those. That's not chemistry. Chemistry is manipulating and changing the electrons in the outer shell of certain atoms. Some things react really well, some things don't. We can see right here, this is chemicals put together in a flask. They're gonna start, we can see bubbles. That's one of the indications that a reaction's taking. Oh, and now we're gonna see a lot of heat. Yeah, and now we're going to see it's forming into a solid. Whoa, it's like a burn. Yes, we will not be doing this experiment in our class. It gets really, really, really hot and can sometimes actually burst into flame. Whoa. All right, so we're not going to do that. Um, All right, physical change, physical change versus chemical change. Yes? What, like, um, so I found, like, they're saying, like, growing up, like, I feel like a marshmallow a little hot. Uh -huh. Is that kind of the same thing? Yeah, yeah, so it'll expand because it's heating yeah. up. Mm -hmm. That's we have the expansion like here, it and it's just causing those uh, molecules to move farther away from each other, adding energy to it. So what's the difference between physical and chemical change? Chemical change means I'm changing it where I can technically, I can't, I can technically, but in a general sense, I can't reverse it, right? So if I burn, the, if I crumble the paper up, I can reverse it by, by flattening it out, right? But if I... If I burn it, I can't really reverse that process. So chemical change is irreversible. Physical change is, but here I'm chopping up a tree. Can I reverse that? No. Not really. So that's it's kind of not a very good example of it. Glue it back together or something. Try to take all those little bits and put it back in like a puzzle, you know, that kind of thing. All right, this is a famous molecule called water, H2O. We have two hydrogens and an oxygen. We call it the Mickey Mouse molecule because it looks a little bit like Mickey Mouse right there. And it turns out that it's shaped this way. So when I draw water, I draw my oxygen and then my hydrogen's coming off in this kind of position where they're bent down. And that's because this molecule is known as a bent molecule. I actually have a couple of electrons sitting there and there. Okay. And that shows that my uh, oxygen and hydrogen are sharing electrons right there. If I have water in a solid state, it is uh, called ice, we call it ice. What temperature does that happen? What temperature does water turn to ice? Um, 30. 32. 30. So 32 degrees Fahrenheit. That's what we use in America, but do you know what it is in Celsius, which is what we use all the rest of the world? Zero. 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 I'm thinking that. Zero degrees Celsius. Okay, to turn it to a liquid, anything higher than 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius will turn it into a liquid. How do I turn a liquid to a gas? What temperature? Uh, 100 degrees Celsius. Celsius. It's boiling water. Who knows what it is in Fahrenheit? Um, it's boiling too. 212. 
One of the miracles, here it is right here. So 32 and 0 for our water to be frozen. And here it just translates. The, the only place that we know of in the universe that we know, right, which is limited, right, but the only place we know where water is found in all three phases is on the earth. That's what makes life possible here. We need it in all three phases, okay, to do that. So, of course, when we're looking at other planets to see if there's life there, what are we looking for? Water in all three phases. We have not found it. Does that mean that there's no life of any kind anywhere else? No. What about, oftentimes we'll say it this way, life as we know it, <laughs> right? What about different kinds of life that we don't know anything about? There might be something else. It would be arrogant enough for us to think that we know everything about the universe, which we certainly don't. Um, I feel like when I was yes. in our ocean, have, have people thought that like, they found like, ice on Mars or something? Right. They think that there's a frozen ice cap on the poles of Mars. We don't know for sure it could be frozen ammonia, uh, but there are more and more evidences pointing to that it actually is H2O. Uh, and that has to do with when we shine lights on it and we can get some data about the kind of reflection we get off of. It's called uh, spectro spectroscopy, and we can try to find it. So we think it it's probably is water, uh, but Mars has a very thin uh, atmosphere, and atmosphere is what holds the gaseous part of water, right? The, the water in its gas form is in our sky. You see it on days when there's clouds. You can see it on those days. Those clouds are just water vapor that's been kind of condensed a little bit. And if there's enough water in there that condenses a lot, it's going to turn into a liquid and it's going to rain. I think we're doing a, a weather course, yeah. After this matter thing, we'll be talking about weather. Ollie, do you have a question? What is um, pneumonia? Pneumonia or pneumonia. ammonia? Pneumonia. Pneumonia is a disease in your lungs that makes you sick. What about um, Ammonia is NH4. Bronchitis, bronchitis can turn into pneumonia. Yeah, my sister got bronchitis. Which sister? Joey. Right now? No, like a couple months ago. Oh, it's, it's bad. You have a bad cough. Yeah. Okay, y'all, so it's a, it's, we're going to start our lab, and what we're going to do, there's a lab in your book about putting pennies in a cup to see how many pennies will cause the water to overflow from the oh. cup. Um, I don't know, I have some pennies and we can try this, but I would like to do our other labs first. I have a lab, um, we're gonna do some chemical reactions today, okay? Yes, Ollie. Do we have to do that? You do not have to do it, but it is in your book and if you do do it, I'll give you extra credit for it. We're doing the we're gonna, reaction. We're gonna do chemical reactions is what I'd like to do today in class. Okay, I'm gonna stop the recording.